Welcome to the Red Bank Chevrolet Main Street Sports Show. I'm Mike Kilroy, and I am here with Central Clarion head coach Dave Eggleton and four of his players, Jace Ferguson, Jimmy Kerr, Braylon Beckwith, and Hayden Heinemann. You have a coaching staff, right? Hey, let's not really maybe pay so much attention to how we're winning and how, how big we're winning. Let's look at how can we keep getting better every day because there's obviously still things you want to do better. Yeah, um, we got a very detail-oriented staff. Uh, we don't always look at the outcome of a game. We look at um, the details of it and, and where we need to get better. Like uh, Hayden said, if you walked into our film session, um, you know, mid-film, you might think we might have lost the game or, or got blown out just because uh, uh, sometimes it gets it gets pretty heated in there when we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Um, and the guys take it well. Uh, they don't they don't pout about it. They uh, they take it with a grain of salt and know they got to get better. And uh, and there's times too I'll I'll say, hey guys, that's my fault. That's a bad call. Um, you know, and, and we all we all got to improve every week. That's that's our kind of our, our mantra this year is we're going to get better every day. Uh, we want to be a better team tomorrow than we were today, and, and same with the next day. So that's what it's going to take. Yeah, and Jace, when you we are in those film sessions, how big is that to like? really, really dive in and, and really look at the finer points of what you're doing to make sure, all right, we're going to get better. We're going to do this better next week. Let's not worry about the victory margin. Let's worry about doing our best every single play. Yeah, yeah, I do that a lot, especially being a quarterback. Yeah. My footwork, uh, if I made the wrong read, how I could have made a better read, uh, even if we did complete the pass. <laughs> if there was a, a guy more open or we could have got more yards on a play. So. And you're chasing a little bit of history. Um, I'm sure you don't think about that, right? Is that like the furthest thing from your mind that that D nine touchdown pass record right now? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just go out there, play my best, uh, do what I can for the team, and then obviously that comes along with it. Yeah, is that important to you guys? Let's not focus on anything but the games. What we have to do during the during that 12 minute quarter, during that 48 minutes. Let's just do what we what we what we practiced the week before. Yeah, I think that's really important because as we go along through these games and as they progress and get harder and harder and harder, we have to be able to play our best game at that moment. And I think that those like individual successes are all good, but at the end, you want to have a team success. Your individual success will come, but we want a team to be successful. So I think everybody's individual goals, we all have them, but there's always one goal for the team. and. We know what that is. Yeah. Obviously, the coaching staff, you're going to be on these guys, try to keep them focused. How much have you seen the players kind of policing themselves, so to speak, in the locker room on the practice field? It, it's gotten uh, – this group has stepped up as the season went. You know, none of these guys were really big, like, vocal guys, you know, starting the year. Um, and we see, see these guys growing in their leadership each week. So uh, they, they do a good job of keeping everyone moving in the right direction and staying focused. And uh, I think uh, we're about to take a break. Hi, my name is Jason and welcome to Sweet Basil. Come on in. You can afford a gorgeous, custom-designed hardwood Kales kitchen for a lot less than you'd pay at a DIY store. Go to FactoryDirectKitchens.net. At Kales, there are never middleman markups or hidden charges that can add 40%. Go to FactoryDirectKitchens.net. That's FactoryDirectKitchens.net. Dubrook, a division of M&B Group, is your trusted local ready-mix supplier for residential and commercial projects. Dubrook provides a full line of decorative concrete, as well as concrete supplies, along with a variety of concrete tools and accessories. Dubrook can provide services large or small for residential and commercial projects to contractors or homeowners. Dubrook is here to provide you with options and ideas to make planning your next project simple. Let Dubrook help you with the supplies you need to get the job done. Dubrook is proud to support our local communities with plants in Clarion, Du Bois, St. Mary's, Butler, Evan City, Bradford, and Meadville. Call 1-844-382-7665.
eyes are the window to your soul, so take care of them. The Laurel Eye Clinic provides complete care from annual exams, glasses and contacts, to cataract and retinal surgery, LASIK and more. As a trusted leader in family eye care for 50 years, you can trust them with yours. Call or visit us online today. At Clarion County Community Bank, you're more than just a number. With personalized service and modern conveniences, they make banking easy. Clarion County Community Bank, where community comes first. This game is brought to you by Tionesta Builders. No, no. Tionesta Builders Supply. Family owned and operated home improvement centers located in Tionesta and Shippenville. Welcome back to the Red Bank Chevrolet Main Street Sports Show. It's also sponsored by Dubrook. I have uh, four members of the Central Clarion football team here and Coach Dave Eggleton, and we were talking about expectations and everything. And, and obviously now some of the outside noise is starting. Uh, Sports Illustrated had, had you in their, in their latest issue about being one of the 25 best teams in, in the state, and Max Preps has you the number one team in, in AA. Again, you know, kind of what we talked about with Jace, how much does, do you block that out? You have to block that out. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's, it's all cool, but, uh, you know, it's neat to see that kind of stuff. Uh, but the only, the only ranking we're worried about is the one that comes out at the end of the football season. That, that's the only one that matters. Um, being number one week seven or number two week seven means nothing. Um, you know, last year we were in the top ten. You know, I think we maybe made as high as like seven, and then we, we lost in the state playoffs and fell right out of the, the rankings. So uh, unless unless you uh, finish in, in the number one spot when it matters, that that's that's the only thing that matters. Yeah, is that is that the overall thought process in the locker room? Is hey, yeah, this is all neat, but it doesn't really mean anything. Um, <clears throat> we probably don't talk about it as much as people think we do. Mm -hmm. We just go in and try to get better every day. Yeah, that, that talks for like uh, us, right? The media and the people in the community. You guys probably are like, yeah, that's great. Let's move on. Let's get ready for Punxsutawney, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we obviously know. We've seen it around, but we just we don't worry about it. We just focus on getting better as a team and winning that week. Yeah, and Jimmy, talk to you about that. It, it's all nice, right? It's nice to be able to say, yeah, yeah, we're getting some respect from around the state and around the country, really. Uh, but again, ultimately, it's week seven. You know, it doesn't really, in the grand scheme of things, no one's going to remember you, you guys were in Sports Illustrated in October if you don't get where you want to be in December, right? Yeah, yeah, like they said, I mean, it's cool and all, but it really does not matter if we're not taking care of things on the field and, you know, in practice and in games. And it, none, of, none of it matters, you know. We, we try to block out as much as we can, and I think we do a good job at that. Yeah, does that again come down to you guys in the locker room kind of being leaders and and not letting maybe some of the other guys get caught up in that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, I think I think that is a big thing that a lot of us try. A lot of the older guys try to keep keep quiet. I guess maybe some of the younger guys or the JV guys saying, "Oh, we're ranked number one." You know, yeah. like we, I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter unless we beat Punksy, beat beat Red Bank, beat St. Mary's, beat whoever. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah, Coach, how proud are you of these guys to be able to stay as focused, it seems like, as they are? You know, because it, it'd be hard, really easy to get caught up in some of this stuff. But it seems like, just talking to these guys just now, it seems like they're pretty, like, you know, dialed in. Yeah, they, they know they know the goals for this year. I mean, they're, they're all veteran guys now. Um, they've, they've been through what they were last year and the year before. Uh, they know that feeling of, of just coming up short of your goal. Um, they know that, that it doesn't mean, I mean, it's, it's great for the program, like in a whole, and it's great, um, you know, for parents to look at. And, you know, but when it comes down to these guys, they know what matters. And it's, it's not a ranking. It's not a, 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 an article. It's not anything except for where we finish. Yeah, and, uh, okay, I know you guys want to get to the volleyball game, but I want to kind of take a poll here. Are you Clarion or CL? Clarion all the way. And you're CL. I, I'm not sure we're Clarion. Clarion. Yeah. We got CL. Oh, so you got, we, got, we got a mix. So what's it like when you have two great volleyball teams like CL and Clarion, but you guys are one team from two different schools, three different – North Clarion, but then now you can go to this volleyball game and, and now you're rooting for different interests. How cool is that? I think it's really cool because, like, whenever we were younger – we like knew each other from like little league and stuff and then before central clarion became a thing you'd go watch clarion and cl and you you'd hear your dads talk about the clarion cl rivalry games so you could always like 
you always like wanted to play in that, obviously, but now I think we're doing a little bit better. But for the volleyball team, it's just like that's like our way. Volleyball, basketball, that's like the way to like see the rivalry through. So we both are kind of passionate about who's going to win the game. Yeah, how about you, Jace, talking yeah, about kind of yeah. interesting dynamic, right? Having being a co-op in one sport and having a separate schools and other sports. Yeah, it's pretty cool. There's probably going to be some trash talking in the student sections tonight, but we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to be, we're still going to be best friends about uh, the CL and Clarion guys and North Clarion, I guess, have really bonded. We're friends with almost everyone on the team. So, and we've been playing together for two, three years now. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's going to be friendly, friendly little rivalry there. I know you you remember those CL Clarion battles in football and other sports. Now with some of the co-ops, you kind of that's kind of lose a little bit of that. But it's good to see this yeah this kind of rivalry back. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things I always kind of related it to. Like it's when you compete against like your brother or something. You, you really hate, like you hate losing against that person, you know, because you're so close and you know you're going to hear about it for that much longer than it would be anyone else. So uh, it means a little more, I guess, when whenever they play in volleyball or like basketball, um, baseball is a, it, kind of the few ones that now that we aren't together with. And so it means a little bit more to try to win that because you know you're going to be together uh, the next season and, and have to have to put up with it and hear about it all season if you didn't. So. Yeah, I think we've talked about this too, about the co-op bringing these schools together. You guys have done a really good job kind of kind of mixing in and everything it seems like it went pretty smoothly how how easy has it been to kind of incorporate guys from different schools you come together at practice at games from the, you know after you have different school days um it, it's going to be interesting but but fun at the same time right well yeah you'll get some people that are really against it sometimes but most of us are just happy to be together and we compete at a high level together yeah, Jimmy, you want to weigh in on the, the co-op and kind of the uniqueness of it with, with some other sports being separate? Yeah, yeah, like what Hayden said, when we were younger, we all played sports together. We all wrestled or did baseball or whatever it was. We were, we were always together. We all lived so close, and we always had friends from other schools. So now that we're all together, it, it, you know, it kind of unites us, and we, we can work as a team like that. Yeah. All right, well, thanks, guys. We'll let you guys get to the volleyball game. Thanks for joining us. This is the Red Bank Valley Main Street Sports Show. It's also sponsored by Dubrook. And thanks, guys, for joining us. When we come back, we'll talk more with, with Coach Eggleton and uh, talk a little bit about the rest of the season and kind of what's coming up. The Cooper Discoverer Road Plus Trail AT, our most trusted truck tire, is now better than ever and available for your truck or SUV. They're designed for the reliability and durability to find adventure beyond the pavement and are backed by a Cooper mileage warranty of up to 65,000 miles. Learn more about the reliable Discoverer Road Plus Trail AT at coopertire.com. Count on Cooper. Or stop by Carly Tires in Clarion. Carly Tires, the area's largest selection of tires. Need reliable plumbing or heating services? Call Luton's Plumbing and Heating. Fast, friendly, and available 24-7. Call them at 814-226-8695. Modern Living Solutions in Knox is always on the lookout for driven, positive individuals to join their team. They offer career growth opportunities and industry-leading pay. No experience is necessary as training is provided. Apply today and build a future with Modern Living Solutions. Hi, my name is Jason and welcome to Sweet Basil. Come on in. You can afford a gorgeous, custom-designed hardwood Kales kitchen for a lot less than you'd pay at a DIY store. Go to FactoryDirectKitchens.net. At Kales, there are never middleman markups or hidden charges that can add 40%. Go to FactoryDirectKitchens.net. That's FactoryDirectKitchens.net.
Dubrook, a division of M&B Group, is your trusted local ready-mix supplier for residential and commercial projects. Dubrook provides a full line of decorative concrete, as well as concrete supplies, along with a variety of concrete tools and accessories. Dubrook can provide services large or small for residential and commercial projects to contractors or homeowners. Dubrook is here to provide you with options and ideas to make planning your next project simple. Let Dubrook help you with the supplies you need to get the job done. Dubrook is proud to support our local communities with plants in Clarion, Du Bois, St. Mary's, Butler, Evan City, Bradford, and Meadville. Call 1-844-382-7665. are the window to your soul, so take care of them. The Laurel Eye Clinic provides complete care from annual exams, glasses and contacts to cataract and retinal surgery, LASIK and more. As a trusted leader in family eye care for 50 years, you can trust them with yours. Call or visit us online today. At Clarion County Community Bank, you're more than just a number. With personalized service and modern conveniences, they make banking easy. Clarion County Community Bank, where community comes first. This game is brought to you by Tionesta Builders. No, no. Tionesta Builders Supply. Family owned and operated home improvement centers located in Tionesta and Shippenville. Welcome back to the Red Bank Chevrolet Main Street Sports Show. I'm Mike Corey. I'm joined here by Coach Dave Eggleton of Central Clarion. The show is also brought to you by Dubrook. And we were talking with the guys. I want to talk to you a little bit. You know, you have a unique take on on, uh, on this program you know being from CL seeing the co-op come together obviously you had a little bit of a, a rough season during the COVID but you've really come out of it uh, re really really well I mean how what did that kind of teach you guys to, to lead to this kind of those little early struggles that you had yeah I mean we were young that like my first year as, as the head coach of the of the co-op um, we were young, uh, and you know, Jace was a freshman. Um, we had a lot of young linemen. Um, just were were just growing into the positions, you know. Uh, and and that that year, you know, I've said a lot of times, but that year motivated these guys to get to work, and and um, the results showed the next year, you know, with the district title. And I don't think anyone that that second year there had any had us picked as their district title favorites, let alone going in and, and mercy rolling a team in the district title. Um, so it was, uh, it, was, it was that season before that motivated them to, to get to work and uh, it's carried over then the next few seasons. And obviously Jace's uh, development has been off the charts from his mm -hmm. freshman year. You go back, you look at his stats, you look at what he does on the football field. I mean, he had negative rushing yards his freshman year. Yeah. Now he's, he's probably one of the most dangerous running threats quarterback or running back yeah. in the district so his development's off the charts yeah i mean i we joke all the time if, if he was just a running back he'd probably be the best running back in the district um because he's that good uh and he's a fantastic football player you know you look at some guys and you say they're great quarterbacks well not only is he a great quarterback he's a great football player he, he does everything he runs the ball um he plays great defense. You know, he rolls up into the box as a safety and, and comes up and tackles. Uh, he, he's just physical. Um, you know, just a fantastic, fantastic football player. We lost a little lights there. Yeah, uh, there, I'm a little bit brighter now. Um, you know, Jason kind of lights up the room when we talk about him. Lights up the room. Um, you mentioned his defense. Does he have the uh, career interception record? Yes. He I has, thought he did. He has our, our program's career. Yeah, the Central Clarion record. Yeah, I mean, it's a short, obviously a short history. Still, but, it's an um, impressive yeah, feat. I, I don't even know what he's at, but it's, it's in the teens. I know that. It, it, you know, yeah. he, he's, got, he's got a lot, um, a lot of interceptions back there at safety. He's, he's just a ball hawk. Um, you know, you put the ball in the middle of the field, there's a good chance he's going to go get it. Yeah, kind of case in point, last week he had an interception return for a touchdown. He threw six touchdowns. He ran for a touchdown. So, 
Um, you get eight touchdowns from one guy. You you're, you're probably yeah. have a pretty good week. Yeah, that's that's a good week. You know, I think a lot of people have just become immune to that. Or, um, you know, same thing with like the Braylon Wagners. You know, you see these guys going out now throwing four. Like if if Jace goes out and has a four touchdown game, or Braylon Wagner has a four touchdown game, and throws for 200 yards, most times that would be a great day for people. And for those those type of kids. People are like, oh, what happened? You know, why do you only throw for four? Why do you only throw for 200 yards? Or uh, it's just we become just so used to seeing those crazy numbers from these kids um, who are just fantastic football players, fantastic quarterbacks. Um, it's 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 going to be. Uh, I know for me, you know, it's going to be different. You know, when he's no longer here, um, I don't like. I tell a joke. I'm like, I don't want to think about that right now. Uh, but you know, what he's brought to our program is just. Uh, it's, it's going to be hard to, for anyone to ever duplicate that. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting you mentioned that. Um, I was thinking that, too, at, at a game I was at recently about at the, the explosion of, of mm -hmm. passing numbers. I mean, like you said, 200 yards for a touchdown passing game would be, in high school would have been, in, in 10 years ago, would have been like, wow, what a, yeah. what a huge night. Now it's a half yeah. for some of these guys. So, uh, yeah, and that's a lot of Jace's yards are at half. You know, he, he gets to play maybe – a drive or two in the in the third quarter, and that's it. Um, so what he's doing is is not he's not going out there and throwing the ball 30 times, 40 times a game. He's not playing a a whole game. He's playing a half to three quarters at most. Mm -hmm. um, so the numbers he's putting up is is just they're just unreal in in the time that he's getting actually to play football. Um, his his attempts are not near what a lot of guys are in the area. Um, you know, I bet if you looked at his attempts. Per yards, he's probably leading in that. He's probably leading in attempts, uh, touchdowns per attempt, um, just because he is so efficient with the ball. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure he would be the first to say this too. He can't do this without that offensive line. Mm -hmm. for the last few years has just been phenomenal. You know, Jimmy was here, Hayden, yeah. Hayden, you know, tight end slash tackle, just right. pretty much dominant uh, up there some of the, your other guys uh, up front you know he doesn't do any of this if, if he doesn't have the protection if you don't have those guys up front who can give him the time right to pick people apart like he is yeah I mean they're doing a fantastic job uh, we we knew coming in that our this line had the potential to be the best line we've had you know we had a great line last year um, we lost the lost three seniors off of it um, and that's hard to replace three guys and but we thought we had the guys coming back that could do it, and, and they're starting to really, uh, starting to really mesh together well in the last couple of weeks, and um, and they're starting to get closer to that potential. And, and I still think there's room to grow. They'll tell you that too, um, which is could be scary, you know, if, yeah. if they if they do reach that potential together. So. Yeah, you know, in the last segment we talked about with the, with the guys about the expectations and focusing on the little things. It's got to be hard, right, this time of the year, because you are going into games, you're, you're beating teams handily, but you know that two or four, four or five weeks from now is when it, it really, mm -hmm. really gets real, and you really have to play your best football. How hard is that for these guys and for this coaching staff to keep them on point when when they know four weeks from now is when it re when we're really it's, it's right. really gonna the rubber's gonna hit the road, so right. to speak. It is hard, you know. You have to. Like you get to a certain point in the game and you start thinking about like, what do I want to work? What do we want to work on? What do we need to get better at? You know, last week we, we really wanted to get a, a, an opportunity, a field goal. Um, we didn't, weren't able to do it in the first half. Um, we did get an opportunity in the second half and we actually, the whole mechanism was off. You know, the snap was a little low. We didn't get the hold where we wanted it. And then the, the kick was wide left. So we, uh, that's something that we still have to get, get better at. Um, and just finding ways each week to to improve, even you know, in a game that gets out of hand, uh, there's stuff that we have to get better at. Maybe it's you know, getting be run blocking, pass blocking, screens, man-to-man uh, -man coverage on defense. That's something that we've really been been pushing the last couple of weeks. You know, we wanted to get into our man-to-man -man looks and get in guys' face and press and be physical. Um, and it's just one of those things you got to keep pushing to get better at every aspect that we can. Yeah, I, I would think that would be the the focus and the challenge when when the game gets out of hand. But you still, I mean, you still got to go in every game, right? Thinking, all right, we got to win this game. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we can't just take someone for granted. 
we can't just expect to show up and win because high school football yeah it's a funny 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 beast right now i mean we have we have very long coaching meetings every sunday um you know no matter no matter who the opponent is you know we we sit down we game plan we uh as a staff we look at you know what do they want to do how can we take that away um and when we're on offense you know what where do we like our matchups um, maybe it's in the passing game, maybe it's in the run game, uh, maybe we, we find uh, different formations that give us advantages. Uh, we, we put the time in every week uh, preparing for every team and then the guys, they put the time in too. Um, they, they know, uh, and I, I always thought that was like a cliche thing, like you're looking past someone, you're taking someone lately. Um, I don't think that's, I, I, don't, I don't know that I've ever seen that being the case, you know. Yeah. Um, now teams play bad, yeah, you have a bad game sometimes and it's easy to point to that, but you should be preparing every week, doesn't matter who, or every day, yeah. doesn't matter who the opponent is. Um, we prepare and, and, and I'm, I'll be the first to tell you and the guys will tell you too, I'm, I'm hard on them all week long and I don't care who the opponent is Friday. Um, we're, gonna, we're working towards perfection every, every day in practice and every game. Um, so there's no such thing in, in my mind as looking past somebody. Yeah, like the guy said about film study, you walk in in the middle of it, you think we lost. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously that's been been important for you. Plus, it seems like these guys really want to get better. They really want to digest that film. Mm -hmm. Even when you win 63 nothing, there's probably five, six, maybe even more, a dozen plays you probably can look at and say, hey, we could have done X, Y, Z better. Yeah, I mean, if, if you come into our film session, if we had a touchdown play, like we don't watch, like you might watch it once and you click over, okay, good play. The play that we lost, you know, three yards on, where it only gained three yards on, we're watching it five, six times and going over each guy what they should have done. Um, you know, we don't we don't celebrate we don't celebrate the the big plays. We we critique the the plays that should have been big plays and weren't. Those are probably some short film sessions then, if you're only looking at the bad plays. No, they, <laughs> some of these weeks that you've had uh, every, recently, you'd be surprised. Yeah, you'd I'm be sure. Surprised. Uh, you know, we, we really truly have the expectation. Every play on offense, we you know we should have it should be a touchdown. Every play defensively should be a no game. It should be a defensive win. And if, if it's not, we're trying to figure out why and fix it. Yeah, you got Punxsutawney this week. They're four and three. They're a pretty pretty solid, dangerous team. Yeah. They made a quarterback switch. Mm -hmm. uh, they they got Maddox Hetrick out. Maybe be a little bit more of a playmaker. But they got those two backs and, and Bo Thomas is a, is a is a dangerous load. So yeah yeah you, you, you probably spent a lot of time. Right. Looking at them this week. Yeah, I mean, Bo's one of the best football players in the district. There's no doubt. Um, and their running back, guy, I believe it's Rutan. Rutan. Um, he is, he's phenomenal as well. He's quick. Um, they got a, a good line. Um, and they've got three different guys I've seen take snaps at quarterback now in one game. So, um, so you just don't know who to prepare for. They all do different things. Um, so it, it's definitely going to be a good, a good test for us. Uh, they're going to come out and give us a, a, a great game, I'm sure. Um, so we're going to have to be at our best. Yeah, that's interesting. You kind of mentioned Sunday have a meeting. Kind of walk, walk me through what, what a typical week is for you and the coaching staff when you're I'm, I'm sure once Friday's night, mm -hmm. the game's over, mm -hmm. it's like, how, how quick do you switch gears? Okay, yeah. you know, after, after this last week, okay, we got to go right to, to Punxsy. Yeah, so, you know, you finish up Friday night, uh, you know, you kind of enjoy it that night, and then come Saturday, every coach has has a job, different job. With Huddle, it's been nice. You know, uh, it used to be you had to get together to to chart plays and everything else. Now, each coach has a job they do. One, you know, does the run plays. One does the pass plays, formations. And we can all input that. Uh, that way, when we meet on Sunday, we can run all of our data and have it ready for our discussion. Um, some a lot of times on Sunday, we'll come in and watch our own film. Uh, some Sundays we'll, we'll say, hey, watch the film on your own. Let's come in and, and go over critiques together um, from Friday night. And then we work, start working on uh, the next week's film, you know, so Punxie's film. Whatever games we have on them, we'll put up, we'll watch, uh, chart all their formations, um, put them on the board, uh, chart our formations and, and what, what defensively we think they're gonna, their alignment's going to be and where we think we can, can get advantages. And, um, so it, it's a pretty, it's a pretty busy, you know, it's, it's a seven day a week thing uh, yes. for, for myself and my staff, you know, we, they work very hard, you know, then go into Monday, Monday's film session for our guys. And there's usually a JV game. So yeah. 
Uh, half of my staff is going to a JV game if it's away. If, if it's home, we all go to it. Um, you know, and Tuesday, Wednesdays, that's you know, full, full pad, full gear. Um, we're, we're really getting after it. And we practice hard. Um, yeah, you've said that in the past, that you yeah. really you don't take it easy on these guys no. during the week. A lot of times it's, you know, it's one, it's, if I have a, you know, a, a Josh Duncan who's my starting D tackle, uh, he doesn't start on offense very much in many packages. He's over there giving us a look on, on defense. Brant Parker, um, you know, I'll give him a shout out. I think uh, him and, uh, and Brendan Carrier, he's our, one of our, he's our uh, split tackle this year. Brendan had some struggles pass blocking earlier in the year. And every day in practice, it's Brant and Brendan going against each other in team. And uh, Brendan has gotten way better because he's having to block oh, Brant yeah. every day in practice. And Brant's having a great season rushing off the edge. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's a very intense session when we go team. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not overly long, you know, 20 minute, 25 minute session of, of intense team time um, mixed in with our indie time and our special team time and stuff like that. Uh, but it, it's very intense and the guys get a lot out of it. So um, there's sometimes I feel like uh, that point's more intense than what we see sometimes on Friday nights. Yeah, because yeah, you do have quite a deep, team so sometimes those yeah those 20 minute yeah. team are, so, are are really uh intense yeah so, so then th 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 thursdays yeah then thursdays uh we do we call it our our walk through night it's really a run through um it's just helmets uh you know we go right after school we go through all of our special teams we go through our goal line our two points our two point plays um and we just walk through offensive and defensively, and we go offense passing against the air. We go our no huddle, hurry up offense. Um, and then uh, we always gather at the, uh, the, uh, the church over here, the, um, the church of God over here right by the school. Um, well, I'm, I'm having a blank on the name of the church. It's okay. But yeah, it's right above people the school. Know. People They're probably know a, what it is. Yeah, they're so great. They, they, they let us you know, make their church home on Thursday nights. Um, we come in. They have a huge uh, TV screen. Um, you know, it's like the size of like the whole back wall. Wow. Um, we watch we watch uh, the other teams film for one, one more time. Um, you know, we watch we, we watch like a weekly hype video, and then we have a team meal together every Thursday. Nice. And, that's, and then we break from there. So, so that's a good t team bonding after long after a long week of practice mm -hmm. and film, and yep. let them have a little bit of fun together, have a dinner. Yeah. You know, get ready for for the next day. Obviously, the next day is the game, and uh, yep. yeah. Uh, I always wanted. To, I always wanted to ask coaches this, and now I have you here. I'm, I'm going to ask you this: How much this happens? You're watching someone else's film, and they run a really interesting play or something you really th think is is neat. Mm -hmm. How much how, do you see that often? Do you, do you say, "Hey, maybe we should run something like that"? Or how often does yeah. that happen with coaches that they see something on film from another team running? And they, hey, maybe we can try to run this. It definitely happens. Um, you know, and sometimes you tweak it a little bit to make it fit into what you do. You know, if if their offense doesn't quite fit your offense, but you certainly see. Um, route combinations that you like, uh, you see, you know, run blocking schemes that you like, and 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 you and you steal them. Definitely, it's 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 definitely a game. Yeah. That, you know, you steal stuff from other coaches that stuff that work. You know, I'd be I'd be dumb if I didn't watch the Union film and say, hey, they did this really well against Punxsy. Maybe we should try this too. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and but as on the other side of it, if I'm you know if I'm watching my film and I, there's something I didn't do well. That's definitely something I'm going to focus on the next week to try to get better at too. So yeah, I always wondered. Uh, I knew it was probably going on because mm -hmm. you saw. I don't know if you saw Kane versus Red Bank. Kane ran that underhanded punt, fake punt. I, yeah, that was a that I went didn't viral. See it, but I heard about that it, went yeah. viral on on mm -hmm. YouTube and everything, and they ran it to perfection. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that spread like wildfire. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of concepts. So you can really pick up even even finite things that maybe the casual fan wouldn't notice, like blocking schemes, like route combinations. I don't know if the average fan really notices that kind of thing mm -hmm. when they're watching, but obviously coaches do. And, yeah. and you, hey, I like this combination. Maybe we can try that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and and you know, we've got a lot of really good coaches in in our in our area that that you can always learn from them. You know. I, I love watching, you know, film from from several of the coaches in the area because I like to see their offensive scheme and and what they're doing, and you know, it's it's fun. Is there there's a real fraternity of coaches? Is there, there is, you in know, District Nine. Yeah, we we've got a pretty good group of guys that that all, um, for the most part, get along. You know, we have we have our moments where 
where you, you get angry with each other, but overall, we you know we we stick together pretty well. Yeah, yeah, and uh, like, do do you often talk in the off season about things like strategy, or is it more just like, hey, how you doing? Have a great season. Oh, there's definitely some strategy. A lot of times, it's even like program talk, like, hey, what what are you doing with your off season? Like, you know, how how's your turnout? What are you doing to get guys out to the you know into the weight room and and stuff like that um, that that you really you really pick up on you know and um, we have like I said we have a pretty good group of guys right now in our in our league coaching um, that that it's it's fun to bounce ideas off them it's fun to you know shoot text messages you know it's not it's not uncommon uh, you know for to get a text from you know for me like Justin Minkowski on a on a Friday morning hey good luck today coach you know and you know he's all the way up in Port Allegheny yes. but we've we've got a good relationship you know uh same with jake heigl and, and you know guys that aren't even just right here in, in clarion county like uh we've, we've grown to have a good relationship with all the local guys um and all the district nine guys too so yeah, yeah uh you've been coaching for for a long time you played who who has we'll do this and then then we'll then we'll go uh who has been your biggest coaching influence or, or maybe more than one guy. I'm sure yeah, there's I mean, a lot. There's, there's been several. You know, I've I've been lucky to to play for, coach with you know a lot of really good coaches. You know, go back to my you know freshman sophomore year coaching for or playing for you know Coach Connie. Um, you know, he he was like the ultimate motivator. Um, you know, if, if Coach Connie told told you that you're going to run through that wall by by God, you're going to get through that wall because he told you to. Um, and then later uh, played for Coach Todd Smith and, and coached with him on multiple occasions. And uh, I think that as far as an offensive mind, he may be one of the best offensive minds I've, I've seen, you know, being able to scheme up um, plays and, um, you know, offensively gain an advantage oh, yeah. on teams. Yeah, he um, did a great job at Butler for a couple of years. Right. If they're and, running their offense up there, yeah. they put a lot of points on the board. And then, you know, I've had, you know, two stints coaching under Coach Weiser um, in – you know, he's he's the guy that uh, you know ru- learned routine. You know, schedule routine, and um, he was very 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 big on um, doing less but doing it very well. Uh, it was always you know he taught he taught everything very very well. Um, the guys you knew his guys were going to be well coached. They you know offensively they didn't do a lot but they did it did it really really well. Defensively, there was for a long time you're going to see man to man four three. You knew it. Um, but you still couldn't beat it because he taught his guys so well, and and he also um, kept everyone feeling part of it. You know, and that's one thing I took mm-hmm. from him was you know it didn't matter whether he was the number one guy in the team or the number you know 50 guy in the team. Um, he truly believed they all have a role and and they all they all contribute to the success of the team. Yeah. Well, thank you, coach. I appreciate you stopping by after practice in the middle of the game week. Uh, this has been the Red Bank. Main Street Sports Show, Red Bank, Red Bank Chevrolet Main Street Sports Show. And also sponsored by Dubrook. Thank you, Coach, for, for joining us, and good luck this week. Hey, thanks for having me. And we will end it there. So thanks again for joining us.